Uh, Dan, I want to switch to you. Um, you are deep in the woods on data and software in blockchain. And really, it's the, the most important thing about blockchain is that it's transparent and open. Um, and that is all about data. And there's more and more data. Um, so please tell us, like, from your perspective, what are um, the biggest trends that are happening and what's exciting in, in your neck of the woods in crypto right now? Yeah, sure. So I guess taking a step back, just you know, thinking about how, how markets evolve, and you know, Greg, you alluded to this around kind of the institutionalization and kind of the maturation of the you know of the marketplace, and you know, we've seen this with traditional finance as well over the last you know call it 50 or 60 years. You know, markets become more sophisticated um, to succeed in markets that become more sophisticated. You need to become more sophisticated. That involves you know better data collection, better data processing. Um, not only just that, but you also need to select providers that can actually scale with you. Um, and that's one of the reasons why people among many like to work with Luke and what, what we found is, you know, the ability to continue to expand and meet customer needs on the data side, um, you know, for their business. So um, I guess where, where we're really going with this is it doesn't matter if you are, you know, pre-trade or post-trade or, or anywhere in between. It doesn't matter really where you sit in the house front you know, front office, middle office, or back office, you know, at the end of the day, you know, data drives a lot of things across what every business does, right? So you either run your business with it day to day, uh, you make informed decisions about your business, um, or really just focus on growing your business and making decisions, right? So, you know, the role of data is becoming, um, you know, more perverse, and what we're seeing in the marketplace going back several years, you know, you would take a handful of data sets, but what we're seeing, particularly from our hedge fund customers, is they're wanting more data. Uh, they're wanting higher you know, volumes of data. They want the data quicker than what they previously did. Um, and they also want us to continue to push our data sets in new areas that it hasn't been before, right? Particularly one of them is being risk management. So again, just to build on, on two things that, that Greg really mentioned that, that resonated was, um, the one, the, the kind of institutionalization of the marketplace, uh, but also, you know, a more focus on, on, on risk management as well. So, you know, given some of our core data sets, you know, you mentioned about sector classifications. We have sector classifications that leads to index construction. Uh, and now we're also seeing more, um, more demand for risk-based data sets as well. Um, and again, I think that's, that's attuned to kind of the, the market maturing. Dan, you, you spent your career doing FinTech and data on the traditional finance side. What is it about this side, the blockchain, it's, it's transparent, it's open perhaps, but what, what is so exciting about blockchain data? It's so diverse, and I think this came up in um, one of the previous panels was, I think it was the gentleman from, uh, from, from Coinbase actually, uh, the, the institutional research, um, thought it was going to be very, you know, a, a, a benefit to work with so much data, but then they realized how difficult it actually is to work with the data. Um, and quite frankly, is one of the reasons why, why we have products is our customers have come to us to solve problems, right? So why people think, you know, everything is on chain, I can see everything, it's immutable, it is the truth, I can see all through history. Um, you know, decentralization brings a lot of benefits in it. I don't think any up, anybody up here would contest that. But what it doesn't bring is standards, right? So while you think the data is all readable on chain, without standard setters or um, you know, normalization of data, it can actually be incredibly difficult to work with, right? When, when you move beyond Bitcoin and you know, some of the exchanges, they don't even agree on what the Bitcoin ticker is, you know, depending on, and you're talking about the largest asset, right? So as you get down the rabbit hole, you see that the rabbit holes have rabbit holes and it gets actually quite complex, right? An example of this is, uh, what we refer to as crypto actions, right? Which is uh, corporate actions or, or crypto's equivalent of corporate actions, right? So you see um, a crypto action that take place, it could be a hard fork, it could be a redenomination or something of this nature, but not all the exchanges will behave in the same manner, right? So, so some may support the new asset, some may not. Um, if exchanges do behave in the same way, they may not do so at the same time, right? So you start to kind of get down the spider web of, of difficulty and, you know, we have dedicated teams that, that literally focus on this day in and day out. Um, and it allows our customers to, again, focus on growing their business and less on the data logistics.